Welcome back to Breaking Points. This is another special edition of Breaking Points, The Intercept. Uh, we hope to do these uh, weekly. I'm joined here by my colleagues now, Sarah Sirota and Ken Klippenstein. Welcome to you both here. Thanks for having us. Good to be with you all. So they each have uh, important stories this week that I want to get into. Let's start with Ken. So Ken, this week, you scooped that there was a letter uh, that was circulating among House Democrats. Uh, maybe it's become Senate Democrats as well at this point, maybe a few Republicans. But the letter uh, was direct, directed to what, both the State Department and the FBI? Yes. Calling on the United States to launch an, an independent investigation into the killing of Shireen Abu Akleh, who's the Palestinian American journalist who was killed recently uh, in, in Janine during an, an IDF raid. Uh, so what's, what's the status of that letter and where, where, does, where does it fit into kind of the, the US, Israel, Palestinian politics? Is this, like how, how new is something like this? Well, this is really an extraordinary step and an important one, a necessary one by the Biden administration to take because it's basically saying, we don't think that the Israeli investigation is gonna be mm -hmm. in any sense impartial or fair. Um, and not just that, it's a politically and legally important uh, step to take because Shireen uh, Abdu uh, uh, Akar was, um, she was a U.S. citizen, and that highlights um, how out of control the Israeli uh, forces are when they do that. I mean, you know, a human being is a human being. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what, what nationality it is, but uh, legally, this uh, right. means that the uh, Biden administration has certain responsibilities that it has to attend to. So not only are they having an FBI investigation, they're having a State Department review of if any um, laws were broken um, when, when, when uh, what witnesses say happened was uh, Israeli forces um, fired on her and killed her. And so the letter was initially circulated by Andre Carson, who's one of the few uh, Muslim members of, of Congress, and Representative Correa. Uh, what, who's on it now? Like, has it been snowballing? Because I saw that some local reporters out in, say, the Bay Area were saying, were, were like updating in real time. Okay, now Barbara Lee is on board, and, and then, but but not just limited to progressives. Like it seemed like a number, of, like a there was a snowball effect going on. Yeah, that's what's interesting about it. When I was talking to sources in Congress about this, they were surprised at the prominence of some of the individuals who were not, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, uh, squad members or progressives. Um, and the fact that they signed onto this is an indication of how serious of a you know breach. Um, not just of U.S.-Israeli relations, but just basic humanitarian norms, I think, that uh, something like this was. When you talk to folks in the region, people in the Middle East, they, you, you mentioned this reporter. This was not a marginal reporter. This was the equivalent of, like, I don't know, like some, you know, person that anyone would recognize right. from cable news show or something. It's like this very is the Ken Klippenstein. <laughs> That's exactly uh, right. Of, of Palestine. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, and, and I think that there's a lot no, of- No, but seriously, she, she, more than 20 years of experience in, in the field in, in Palestine, somebody who was really an icon of journalism over there, which Ken will be. <laughs> I'm uh, on my way there, yeah. But yes, like- <laughs> Give me time. Yeah, it's just um, a tr tremendous reporter who, uh, most people who have watched Al Jazeera English or have, you know, are interested in that, would know immediately who they're talking about when they, when you think about Shireen. But yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, the prominence of this person who was killed and the fact that, um, you know, the U.S. now is asserting, or, you know, in this letter is, is asking the FBI and the State Department to, uh, you know, assert some kind of uh, response that is going to send a message to Israel that this is unacceptable. Um, so my understanding is that it's garnered a lot more signatures than the two co-leads that I initially reported on. You mentioned this a moment ago, um, a Bay Area news outlet um, KQED reported that um, they'd gotten, I think, two or three more reps. And my understanding is that there are a bunch more, and they're going to keep circulating this, trying to gather as many signatures as they can before they end up sending it. But I think it's going to be a very awkward, <laughs> uh, from the perspective of the Biden administration, ask because this is something that is very clearly has broad support. I think in 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 at least among Democrats in Congress, uh, and to see what the administration is going to do to a government that you know historically they have been very uh, deferential to. And so there, I think there's actually, there's good reason for, the, for people to be skeptical of whether this in, investigation will be independent. I don't know, Sarah, if you remember, uh, right after uh, she was killed, the IDF and, and some of the uh, gov Israeli government leaders put out a video showing a Palestinian gunman firing down an alleyway, saying like, it looks, oh, it looks like Palestinians may have uh, accidentally- yeah. And then they had to roll that back. Killed her. They, they had to roll that back when 
it, when there was analysis done of it, shown that actually, so they were, they were shooting down an alley, that was correct, it was happening around the same time, but at the other end of the alley were IDF forces who were also shooting back. Uh, but then from IDF, there was a direct line to where Akle was. There's been Bellingcat, who is, you know, a lot of people just associate with uh, you know, having a pro-Western bias. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of their work actually does cut against the other grain. Like some, the, you know, a lot, they, have, they have sophisticated analysts. They came out and said, no, uh, our forensic analysis of this suggests that it could, it, it could only really have been the IDF. And so then at the funeral, you have Israeli police, you know, beating the mourners to the point where they almost completely dropped her casket. And so right. from that perspective, you're like, how on earth could anybody trust this government then to do an impartial investigation into its culpability here? Right. And the Israeli government, you know, tried to argue that, well, the police, you know, targeted the mourners because they were respecting the family's wishes to have the funeral proceed in a certain way. Um, and obviously that's been met with quite a bit of skepticism. Right. So, um, yeah. That's I, not how the, right, <laughs> the family did not want it to unfold how it did. Yeah. I, I think anybody could watch the video and, and have a little right. skepticism about that <laughs> argument. Um, so, yeah, I think your point is completely made that a lot of people would have reason to question if uh, the Israeli government could execute a truly um, unbiased investigation. Yeah. What was incredible, too, is if you look at just um, the Israeli government's response uh, to when the police uh, beat the protesters, initially they, they were asking the police, why are you doing this? At first their claim was, well, they were waving around Palestinian flags and chanting nationalist mantras. And that was their, uh, that was their stated reason for this. Right. That's incredible, you know, right. and it just, <laughs> to, right. to any sort of audience watching that, I mean, right. it goes a long way towards explaining why there is this skepticism that exists towards what nature of the investigation is going to be. And then not just that, but the video they released, they actually edit, selectively edited video to make it look like someone was throwing rocks at the hmm. police and the idea being that this was provoked the police response. Um, I can't remember who was able to find this out, but it, it, what it showed was that the video was sort of, I think it was sped up and, and omitted a part that made it look like a guy who was just waving his arms in frustration at how you know horrifying this scene was. They made it look like he was sort of you know, charging at someone mm -hmm. or throwing something, and it wasn't the case at all. Right. And so just again and again, these indications that there's not a good faith um, uh, uh, mindset on the part of the Israeli government when it comes to right. any sort of uh, look into what happened here. And the effort to defend that uh, is now bleeding into, and I want to talk about your story in, in, a, in a second, is now bleeding into Democratic primaries. Just on, on Tuesday, uh, you had uh, AIPAC combined with DMFI, Democratic Majority for Israel, using mostly Republican donor money uh, to intervene in a bunch of different primaries, including two in North Carolina uh, and one in Western Pennsylvania. They spent uh, three million, three, three million dollars against uh, Summerlee in Pennsylvania. Several million against Erica Smith and and Nita Alam. Uh, with Nita Alam and Erica Smith, it was enough to get their opponents over the top. Uh, in Western Pennsylvania, they were able to uh, cl take a 25 point gap and close it to you know a tri triple digits right now. And Steve Ir Irwin is suggesting that he's going to go for a recount. Like it, they they were able to bring it that close, uh, but we're still not to get able to get it over the top. They're now saying that what that says is that there's no support you know, among the American people for the left's anti-Israel politics. Now, uh, the left argues that it's actually AIPAC that is long-term anti-Israel because the way that they are pushing them in such a hard line direction is leading them in, into this, uh, this cul-de-sac of international isolation that is, go that is going to be detrimental long-term. But setting that aside, the ads were not about Israel in either North Carolina or Pennsylvania. It's, it wasn't as if there was a public debate in Pittsburgh over a candidate who was pro-Israel and one who was anti-Israel and voters chose X, Y, or Z. Uh, what kind of ads they run instead? Yeah, I mean, this consistently, you know, is something that we've been seeing where the kinds of ads that they're running have really, there's no indication that there's um, anything about Israel and politics. Um, so it, it just goes to show that, you know, this sort of, as you were saying, repeatedly we see like these bad faith um, attempts to uh, involve themselves in American politics um, that, you know, 
are not actually about their long-term interests and don't necessarily help their long-term interests from what it appears that they are, um, but instead using sort of these right-wing donors um, to uh, marginalize progressives often. Right. Um, and, you know, I think APEC or DMFI came out and said when Summer Lee um, emerged as the victor by just a slight majority, um, that that was an indicator that, you know, her brand of progressive politics is not popular in the Democratic Party, yeah. which, well, she emerged victorious. <laughs> so I don't really see how that, that argument makes yeah, that's, sense. That's how you know when there's this organic upswell of support for Israel, when not, when they have to dump millions into this and that none of the ads overtly mention uh, the you know policy with respect to Israel. Yeah. It's just risable on its face, I feel like. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.